Hey Go Developers, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to cover something super exciting, how to generate PDFs using Go. We'll be using the Maroto package to make this process simple and fast. Let's dive in. If you've ever needed to generate PDF reports, invoices, or even certificates in your Go applications, you know that it can be tricky without the right tools. But with the Maroto package, creating beautifully styled PDFs becomes a breeze. Maroto provides a simple and intuitive interface. Here is the documentation of the package. The documentation is quite detailed and contains a lot of examples. This is the command to install the Maroto package. Let's copy this. To get started, let's install the Maroto package in our Go project. Run this command in your terminal. Once it's installed, you're ready to start generating PDFs. We are going to build this PDF file with code. We will look closely at each section while implementing the program to generate this file. Now, let's write a simple Go program that generates this PDF. We'll start with the basics and gradually build on top of it. Let's dive into the main function, where we will initialize the PDF creation. We create the Maroto object M, which will be used to define our PDF content. We need to pass the configuration in the new function. Now we will create the configuration we will use for the Maroto object. The new builder function creates an instance of a builder that we use to set various options like page orientation, size and margins. It's like starting with a blank slate and then adding options to configure how the PDF should look. Now we will set the page orientation for the PDF. The function with orientation requires orientation.vertical, which means the page will be in portrait mode. Next, call with page size function to set the page size. Let's set this to A4 size. Now, we will set the page margin starting with the left margin. We put it to 15. Similarly, we can set all side margins. Finally, we call the build method, which takes all the settings we've configured and creates a configuration object that can be passed to the PDF generator. This finalizes the setup and returns a ready-to-use configuration. Now, we pass this configuration in the new function. Here, we will break the PDF into sections. The first section is the header. It includes a company logo and title. Then comes invoice details. Here, we will add the date and invoice number. The third section would be the item list. It will list all items in the invoice. Finally, we will have a footer. It will contain the total amount, a signature section and a QR code. We will implement these sections as separate functions. Let's put placeholders for these functions. These functions will accept the Maroto object. We'll implement each of these functions next. Let's create the add header function. We are going to create this part of the invoice PDF. It contains the logo, the company's name, and the title, invoice. Here. We'll use the add row function from Maroto to add rows of content to the document. First, we add a row of 50 in height with an image component, image.new from file call. There is some problem here. I think VS Code has imported the wrong package. Let's see. We will replace this with the Maroto image package. Now the error is gone. We set the width to 12. Maroto divides the column into 12 sections. So here we are taking up all columns. We specify the path to our logo image. We have the Go logo in the assets directory. Next we set the image properties using props.rect. 
We want it centered, so we set center to true. Let's set the percentage to 75. Next, we add another row with a text component using text.newcol for the company name. We set the height to 20 and then the text. Now we set some text properties using props.text. Top is set to 5 to have some space from the top. We set the font style to bold. Finally, we add another row for the invoice title, following the same approach with text properties. The row height is 20, the text is invoice, and the font size is 12. Now that the header is ready, we'll implement the next section. The next section will be implemented in the function add invoice details. Here we display the current date and the invoice number. In this code, we add a row of height 10. There are two text columns in this row. The first column width is 6, which spans 50% of the space. We put the date of the invoice. Similarly, the next column has the invoice number. The date is aligned to the left and the invoice number to the right. We add a separator line across the page to visually distinguish sections. The next section is the item list. This is the most interesting part. Here we will have to define a structure for the items in the invoice. This struct models each item on the invoice. Each invoice item includes item, description, quantity, price, discounted price, and total fields. To create a table of items in the PDF file, we need to define two methods for the invoice item struct, getHeader to generate the header row, and getContent to create the table contents. Let's implement the function getHeader first. The getHeader method returns a new row with bold column titles for each field in the invoice. Here, we create a new row with row.new function. The height of the row is 10 units. We will use add function to add columns to the row. The first column is for the item field. Here, we specify the width of the column, the text, and the bold text style. To save time, let's paste the code for the other columns. The point to be noted here is that we specify different widths for different columns, like two units for item, three for description, and so on. The sum of the widths should be 12. If it goes beyond that, the columns will go beyond the page. Now, we need to implement the getContent method. This method takes an integer as an input. This parameter is the row number of the table where the item will be filled. In short, this method is responsible for generating a content row for each invoice item. Or in this code, we create a row for an item and return it. Row.new creates a new row with a height of 5 units. Each text.newcol adds the content of each column to the row. The width of each column is kept the same as the header so that they align properly in the table. Let's do something interesting here. We will apply background color to alternate rows. This condition checks if the row index is even. If it is, we apply a new style to it using the width style function. We use prop cell, we apply the background color. These RGB values create a light gray color. Overall, this method dynamically generates the invoice rows and applies alternating background colors for a professional look. Next, we will create a new function getObjects. This function creates and returns a slice of invoice item objects. We will simulate retrieving items from a data source and create a table of invoice items. 
Here, we created a sample list of items and their attributes. For example, laptop is the item. This is the description. This is the quantity. Then comes the price, discounted price, and total. In this loop, we create a slice of invoice items. For each item in the contents, the function constructs an invoice item object, populating it with the corresponding values. These objects are then appended to a slice, items, which is returned for use in generating the invoice. Let's get back to the add item list function. It will add the items in the PDF. We will use the list.build function to build the table or the list in the PDF file. This is a generic function that converts a list of objects into a format that can be added to the PDF. We need to specify the type which in our case is invoice item. It accepts a slice of invoice items. We can call getObjects method here to retrieve a list of invoice items. This function returns a row slice and an error. Let's receive them. If the list build function fails for some reason, we immediately log the error and terminate the program using log.fatal. At last, we add the created rows to the Maroto object using the add rows function. Now, the only remaining part is the footer of the file. Here we define the add footer function, which is responsible for adding the footer of the invoice. The footer includes the total amount, a signature placeholder, a QR code for additional information or a link to the website. We're creating a new row that is 15 units high. This row will hold two pieces of text, total amount and the actual total cost. We add another row, but this one is taller, 40 units in height. This row will contain two elements, a signature on the left and a QR code on the right. With signature.newcall, we create a signature field. It spans six units. The label Authorized Signatory is placed in this column. For the text, we use the courier font. Here, we create a QR code that also spans six units, the second half of the row. The QR code will point to this URL. The props.rect property specifies how the QR code is rendered. Percent 75 scales the QR code to 75% of the available space. And the QR code is centered within the column. A wrong package has been imported here. We are using version 2 of this package. Let's fix this. Let's go back to the main function. Now, all the parts of the PDF file are ready. We need to write the file to the disk. Here, we generate the PDF document and handle potential errors. Once the PDF is generated, we save it to the specified location. If anything goes wrong, the program will log the error and stop. Now let's run the program. Here is the generated file. This is exactly what we wanted. That's all for today. You've seen how easy it is to create and style PDFs using the Maroto package in Go. Whether you're generating reports, invoices, or any other kind of document, this tool will save you a ton of time. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more Go tutorials. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.